Okay, hello everybody. Virtual boxing round two. Bud versus the desktop environment. Um, let's log in to the ISWM session because what I will show in this video is much easier to, to show in that uh, environment. Uh, so, yes, let's just log in. There, I will show you now three examples of almost it's kind of the same issue in a way uh, and don't worry here now the, it, it might look like this is what, what is this this is just a SUSE, SUSE thing it doesn't apply to me but it actually uh, is a universal problem uh, across multiple distributions and environments and what what so on <laughs> um, this is actually the problem this prompt here I, I simply don't like the look of this prompt because this looks like a hack uh, when I, I i open the software center here yast software from the menu i get a prompt but the prompt is actually just a x term window here with the password prompt uh, enter the password and that will start the gui application so this is like a GUI in a terminal in a I I don't like this stuff and another thing that is very annoying with this is that it um, Stays on the screen here even after I have entered the password I don't get rid of this window until I have closed the application that was actually started here for, for, uh, by this prompt and The thing is I will keep this window uh, because I will show you some package stuff here also Okay, that's the first issue first example next example and this is also don't worry but we i will use sublime text here because i simply because i this is the only only example i can think of where this issue occurs but it, this is also something that can occur in uh, many other applications and i have i know i have encountered the same thing uh, in other applications i just simply cannot think of of another example now uh, that's why I'm using Sublime for this. And you can see we have open here USR share accession desktop systemd desktop, our desktop file that we need pseudo privileges to to um, uh, to uh, to operate on. So if I try to save this file, I get an error from Sublime. And the error reads blah 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 failed USR bin pk exec failed. So there is something uh, going on with this pk exec command that is problem number two or example number two example number three we have already seen and i will also now uh, show you that i have installed um, xfce terminal and this one is for you torsten it's uh, not as bright and annoying to look at as xterm uh, is uh, because it's so so white I, I agree so this is a bit more comfortable to look at that's the only reason I installed XFCE terminal um, this example we have already seen it it's like when we try to open leafpad simply by uh, prefixing it with sudo and then say that we want to open this desktop file for example so usr share accessions uh, desktop systemd dot desk desktop get a password prompt from sudo enter the password but we still get some error but leafpad cannot open display so as you can see all of these issues are related to gui applications and sudo password prompts uh, but they are slightly different from each other but we will fix all of them in this video and we will actually start with uh, fixing the sublime one uh, and to do that, um, we need to figure out what's going on with this pk exec command. Um, we can actually <laughs> use this to exemplify this. So if we, instead of saying sudo, we say pk exec here. You see. We get some kind of uh, um, authentication for, for policy kit exec blah 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 okay enter the password 
Uh, it was the correct password, but authentication failed anyways because there it couldn't blah 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 pol polkit agent helper failed no session for cookie very cryptic issue. What it boils down to is that we don't have a policy kit um, agent helper activated, and that's what we need for pol uh, PK exec to work. And when we have, then we, yeah, let's get that. And you get that. The thing is, if you are using a desktop environment, this is not an issue for you. If you are using GNOME or KDE or XFCE or LXDE or Mate or some other desktop environment, this is probably already taken care uh, of for you, this issue. It's set up. Uh, but if we are not using a desktop environment or using uh, like this bare bones uh, ISWM generic desktop, then this is not set up. So we need to do that ourselves, uh, and we can easily do that. The easiest way to do it is to borrow <laughs> a Polkit agent helper from a desktop environment. So if you search for Polkit in your uh, package manager, you can see here that we have some Deepin Polkit agent. We have um, Mate Polkit agent, which I have already installed here. That is what we will use in this video uh, as the example, but you could, you could choose another one here. You could use GNOME Polkit helper um, or KDE uh, Polkit agent here. Uh, XFCE, I believe, actually uses GNOME's Polkit uh, uh, thing here. If we look at the description for Matea Polkit, uh, we can see that Matea Polkit provides a DBus session bus service <laughs> that is used to bring up authentication dialogues used for obtaining privileges. Uh, and as you can see, I have it installed, but that is not enough. You also have to start the agent. Um, so if we do that, Matea, nothing, auto tab, completion, nothing, Polkit nothing i don't really know what the command to execute is here uh, then we can look at the file listing for this package by selecting the package and click file list here but you can do this in different ways uh, depending on <laughs> different package managers you know uh, but here we can see the files that was installed and there is actually just one single file here really which is usr libexec polkit mate polkit mate authentication agent one uh, the rest here is just documentation, uh, readme, news, authors, license, and this is a desktop file that simply just execute this uh, thing that it installs into USR libexec. So this is the actual daemon or agent we need to start. It's located here, and as you can see, it's not in the normal executable path, uh, so that is why we didn't found, find it uh, with autocompletion. But if we start this command, it is actually a normal program here, but it's like a daemon program. Um, when that is running, and now when we try to save Sublime, uh, this file with Sublime, now we don't get an error. Instead, we get a proper uh, GUI GTK prompt here. And this window, this is really what this Mate Polkit is. It, it gives you this window when you uh, execute PK exec. So, now we can actually save files here with Sublime, uh, but this also means that um, if we try this command again here, while the daemon is running, pkexec leafpad uh, and open this file, look at this, this is how pkexec works. So now we don't get the uh, prompt in, in, in the terminal, instead it, it uses the Polkit agent that we have installed and enabled, and in our case now that is the Mate Polkit uh, thing. But it still doesn't work. Now we get the old issue anyways about leafpad cannot open display, so it's, it doesn't work anyways. Uh, But that at least, now we have at least solved our sublime uh, issue here, so we can minimize that. Issue number one uh, was this thing, you know, the xterm window that uh, gave us the prompt. It, it's like I, I would much rather have, um, yeah, the best case here would be to get the same thing, the P, pk exec 
version with the Mate um, Paul kit agent window, but that I, I don't know how to do. But um, we can actually make this a bit better at least. Uh, but to do that, we have to do some investigations here. When I open this software center program, I selected SUSE system YAST software from this menu here. And you know, these menu items, all of them, they are, uh, they, they come from a desktop file somewhere. Uh, and let's try to find that desktop file somewhere. Maybe we can open Thunar, it's, it's the best. Um, Thunar file manager. Uh, desktop files, like system desktop files, uh, like this is usually located here, USR, share, applications. This is where those uh, desktop files are normally located. And now I just know that um, this software center thing is in YAST2. And well, this is nice with Thunar, we can actually see the icons, so then it's easier to figure out what is what because they have kind of cryptic names here uh, and the software one is uh, let's see this is actually the the entry that opens um, the software center and if we open this with leafpad we can see uh, how the desktop file looks and this is the command that uh, starts the software center so if we close the software center because it's much easier now if we execute this command from the uh, uh, command line uh, to see what's going on. So we quit this. I know it's a bit slow this GUI and then we finally get rid of that stupid password prompter. So if we execute this from a terminal we should get the same thing right? We get the xterm um, password prompt. We enter the password and it should start the software center. And here we can also see that this seems to be like something similar to PKXIC, but here it's called XDG-SU. Uh, and it works like this, uh, dash C for the command you want to open, and then the command in, uh, in, in one argument like this. Um, XDG-SU is that is a program that obviously is installed by default on a SUSE system since it uses that for these uh, YAST system um, configurations things here. So we can do which xdg su and you will see it's located here in USR bin. And we can actually look at this uh, in leafpad because it is just a shell script actually. Here we can see that, and it's um, it's not that long, you know, uh, uh, but it's very old. It's like I think it's it hasn't been updated since 2010, and uh, this program tries to bring up a prompt that is uh, desktop environment agnostic, uh, and it does that by trying to identify what desktop environment you are using. And it does that uh, here. Detect DE is a function, uh, checks for known desktop environments. And the, the way it does this is simply by um, looking at the environment variable, a var variable xdg current desktop. Um, I don't even think that is set here in this generic uh, desktop that we have now. Do export and then grep xdg. Uh, no, we have it here. Current desktop is IceWM, but that actually doesn't match any of these entries. Um, and then it does a lot of like fallback tests and stuff like that. But I, I have examined the, this script a bit and it kind of falls down to this generic, which in turn means that it brings up uh, the Xterm uh, prompt. But if we change this environment variable, uh, yeah, if we should, let's do that. We set xdg current desktop. Let's change it to uh, one of the entries here. And I, I have used xfce, uh, it seems to work fine. 
xfce and now um, we execute that command to open the software center now we don't get xterm uh, window we get a gtk window uh, prompting for for password this is not the same as pkxx so so this is created uh, from by, by this I, I, I don't remember, I think it actually uses Senity or something like that to, to create the, the, the windows. Um, but also worth noting here uh, is that I enter the password, it will start the software center yet again, but you will see that it looks slightly different here because it also adapts these pro uh, this program is also taking the XTG current desktop into account and can have a different theming and stuff like that depending on what desktop environment is set. Um, now we, we should really not uh, delve on this too much here but spin yes 2 which is the command here um, that that, um, that we opened is yet another uh, long ass uh, old shell script here. Uh, which we can quickly look at in leafpad just to show you that it is but this this is of course SUSE specific this this thing here um, but here if you if you review these files a bit which I have done uh, you will see that they also uh, care about the the, the XDG current desktop environment variable and you you can you will get like different uh, gtk gui or qt gui and stuff like that depending on what what that is set to uh, all in all i have discovered that it is a very good idea here specifically on on SUSE where, where you are using a lot of GUI, much more gui applications that it it kind of makes a, a difference to to set this have this environment variable set um, to an uh, desktop environment that is in this xtg su list but this is yet again here it is uh, of course because uh, if you are using this xtg su i hadn't really heard about that program before uh, using SUSE here and i just got curious uh, and uh, wanted to see if it was available on arch uh, so we can go to arch linux org packages xdg su search for that it's not in the official repositories but you will find it on aur i just want to show you this because it's kind of interesting and maybe i, I don't know maybe someone ha has uh, something to say about this uh, on aur we can see that the upstream url for this is a github repository um, that's owned by Tarak Boomba and it hasn't been updated since 2013 but that is actually more recent than this and I just took a quick peek here uh, this seems to be like the source here you can see extremely similar here it is obviously the same source or kind of maybe we don't have version here yeah, whatever, but it it's specifically when you look at the top of the script here, it, it really, you can see it's the same source, but this one of them must be a fork of the other because the copyright notice here, notice how, how it is like different. It, some of the entries are the same, but some are not and some are completely different it's uh, so one of these must be a fork of the other and I I'm not really sure how this all fits together and it also makes me I I'm also not sure why SUSE is using this at all you know uh, because this is like the old way of doing this uh, and a non standardized shell script uh, I don't know nothing against uh, Tarak Boomba Attila Untas here but uh, there is like a official the official way to do this to get the password prompt GUI password prompt the standardized way to do that is is to use uh, polkit exec pk exec as far as I know but 
this is how uh, th this is at least how it, how it works here and I, I just also wanted to highlight that this is like an old ass shell script if you do install this on arch for example be aware and review this yourself before using it uh, and so on you know um, but uh, now what we do here yeah, we have the last we have the last issue also to fix uh, sudo leaf pad uh, doesn't work right so let's do that the way to do that is to actually use xdg su for some reason that actually works but pkexec doesn't work xdg su c leaf pad uh, now we get leaf pad we get this prompt enter and now this is actually a uh, leaf pad running as uh, root and now we can do root operations like um, saving that desktop file if we wanted to so yeah, just quickly do that uh, x sessions desktop system d desktop and there it works if you open it with xdg su but now we got the x term uh, <laughs> prompt here that was uh, because we haven't set the xdg desktop environment uh, variable. So the things I want to do now is set, make sure that environment is uh, globally set. The xdg current desktop is set to xfce. And I want to create a systemd unit that will start this um, uh, polkit uh, daemon thing. Uh, USR libexec polkit mate, polkit mate authentication agent one. Um, yes yeah let's do that and we we can have a little chat about this all all this <laughs> mess afterwards we are it, it's also very quick here because what what the way i do this now is um, we open remember the desktop ini file we created in the last video that is what we start our desktop session with to make sure that system d has imported uh, all the environment this is actually where i prefer to add these uh, uh, x or graphical session related environment variables like for example xdg current desktop is equal to xfce all caps important um, this is actually all we have to do but you could add this to like bashrc or dot profile or if you remember, I consider this file as a proxy for xinit rc. So if, if you're using xinit and xinit rc or something like that, or .x session, that's also a good place to place this, uh, to export this environment variable. Uh, but we do it here, and then we create the systemd uh, unit. Uh, as you can see, I have created some bookmarks here in the file picker thing. So here we have the system d uh, uh, um, directory yeah we can open the i3 service but we also want to create a new uh, unit that we call unit uh, description is equal to uh, polkit agent i like to do this mate it doesn't matter that much um, service exec start is equal to and here i don't have this i need to sheet and copy the command line here uh, like that there we have that uh, here i also like to add this uh, setting so restart on failure and that's a really good thing to add to all, most most of the units i, I actually use this so it will automatically restart uh, this this command if, if it somehow crashes or, or fails it will try to restart it but it will not this is also great with system d that it um, it will try to restart it but then it, if it fails again it will actually try to restart it again if it fails again it will restart again but then if it fails again immediately afterwards it will stop trying so you don't get an endless uh, loop of trying to start this and stuff like that all of this is just one single line 
if you just think about it a bit, yeah, some people say, but just do this, just add all of this to X init, you know, because we could do that. We could add add this to our init script, to start this program there. That would also work. But uh, like restarting on failure and stuff like that and making sure that it also is not already running, blah, blah, blah. All of that is taken care of by system D and system D will also start uh, uh, our units in parallel so it's uh, it's also very fast to to start the x session like this so save that in user um, yeah bud.config systemd user here we save this unit as um, matea polkit dot service and now we can just start that in our i3 service we just add it just like we did with thunar uh, we uh, uh, also add mate polkit like that and now we log out of this mess i think it might be a good idea to close this properly at least mm -mm -mm -mm. there now we log out log out close window I don't care and we log into our costume desktop environment system D uh, managed so enter the password it's an i3 session open a terminal uh, we can we can open sublime with let's use D menu to do that Sublime remembers the last open file, which is nice. So now we can simply just test this by saving this document. It immediately brings up the correct prompt here. We didn't have to start anything that is handled by system D. We can even check it here with system CTL user uh, status mate polkit. Yeah, it's running, it's active, that's great. Uh, so that works. And we can also uh, try to open that. Um, uh, we can do this xdg su uh, c leafpad. This should open, not give us that x term prompt. Instead, we get the xfce version here. Then it's a GDK window. Um, and that works. We can now use xdg su, and that means we can also open the software center and stuff like that. Uh, we get the correct um, dialogue. So, yeah, we. I think we end this video here. The, I could go on many different uh, side <laughs> side tracks here, um, but uh, I, I really just want to, wanted to take care of this issue with uh, so we can open GUI applications as sudo and and do this thing and well one one thing i would like to say here uh closing closing remark is that this pk exec thing is actually very useful for you can use it yourself uh, for example let's say we want to make a, a backup copy of this file you know usr share x session desktop system d desktop um, Top system D desktop. Let's say we want to make that in the same directory here. Then we say backup, whatever. Like this. We cannot do that, of course, because permissions denied. If we wanted to do that, we just uh, uh, prefix the whole command here with sudo, of course. Everyone knows how, how this works. No big deal. And then we enter the password and that would of course work we would create this a backup a copy this file into this backup file um, but you could actually instead of saying sudo we could say even for a command where it's uh, at first it might seem like why would you ever do this you know pk exec um, and now instead of getting the password prompt in the terminal we get get it in a gui window and we can enter the password and it should now have created a copy in in this uh, directory and there we can see backup was created it was created now um, 
so why would you ever do that? You know, we, why not just use <laughs> sudo? You get the, it's the same thing. You just get the GUI window. What's the big deal? But the, the big deal is to, to use this in scripts. It's, it's completely pointless, of course, to do it on a terminal like this. But if you do it inside uh, shell scripts or bash scripts or Python scripts or whatever, you use pkexec when you need sudo privileges, then you can make sure that you always get the proper prompt, you know? Because uh, a shell script might not always be executed from an interactive terminal like we are doing now. Sometimes a shell script is triggered from a i3 key binding. It could be triggered from by selecting something in I, uh, D menu. It could be triggered by selecting a desktop uh, file from a menu like that, you know. You cannot always count on having a, a terminal where the password is entered. Uh, and that means if you use pkexec in your scripts, then you also don't have to say to your users or to yourself that uh, make sure to start this script as sudo, like uh, sudo my cool script. Or not, not with a my cool script. You don't want to do this, you know, because that means that every single command in my cool script will have sudo privileges. Uh, and that can have like very annoying side effects. Like sometimes you, you just want to create a file in your home directory, but when you do it as sudo, your home directory is slash root. Or even if you have the full path to the correct file in the home directory and you create it, but the script has sudo privileges, then the file will be owned by root and stuff like that. So even if it's not like security issues, you can get like annoying issues by, by executing it as sudo. But of course, it's also like uh, a much more of a security risk to run anything uh, with sudo privileges, even your own scripts actually. But if you use pkexec only for the specific command, uh, for example, copy a file or whatever it is, you know, or create a file here in this protected directory, where, whatever it is, if you do that inside the script instead, then uh, you, you never start that script as sudo and you, you just get the prompt when it's actually needed. It's much more secure, it's much more, uh, it's, it's just so much better to do this. It really makes the world a better place if we if we use this uh, more uh, and more scripts and programs would be designed uh, to use pkexec. Sublime is designed to use that under the hood and many other modern applications actually use pkexec. That is the recommended standardized, I think, way to do this. Um, but many old applications like Leafpad and, and like uh, Gparted is like a classic uh, GUI applications that a lot of people use, you know, that that needs to be started as sudo. It doesn't ask you to be sudo when you actually do the, the um, when you format your drives, you have to be sudo when you start the program. And of course, as I showed you there, uh, SUSE Software Center, you need to be sudo when you start the program. Uh, same with Synaptic, um, um, like apps, graphical front end, you also need to be sudo when you start that program. It would probably be better if they w was also um, designed like this, so you get the prompt when the, when it's just for the commands that that needs them. Um, and final remark is that you should be extra careful to use sudo with graphical applications because then you also get like sudo privileges into your X uh, server, which uh, or X session thing, and that is. Uh, you, you want to avoid that, that as much as possible. Um, so, thank you for watching everybody. In the next video, I think we just continue adding more stuff to our systemd uh, x session configuration here. I haven't really decided what we will do if we, if we will do like xfce panel. I think we will do that. Um, but I also want to add some of my i3s uh, components because they are some of them we, we can actually make better use of them with, with uh, systemd. Another thing I would really like to do is to make um, uh, systemd watch uh, some of our configuration files, for example the x uh, or i3 configuration. 
so uh, so it will automatically reload i3 when you save the file you can actually do that with system d and you will also see how uh, awkward it is to do it but it is also it works really well once it's set up so um, th those are things that i definitely know that we will do but there are, there is so much to cover uh, about this system d uh, configuration I got some comments about people who was like, well, what's the point of this? Why not just start i3 from uh, with exec i3 or whatever? But you will see once this little series is over that th there are some benefits that is kind of unique to system D uh, by doing it like this. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm not backing out of, 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 of um, saying that this is this is a waste of time the, if at least if you have system d of course then then it's uh, why, why not uh, use it and it's also the thing is it's a good way to just uh, get familiar with how system d works by experimenting here with our little um, desktop session and also by doing it like we are doing now uh, with our when we when it is like a proper setup x session here if you manage to break something just log into to a different session uh, where everything <laughs> hopefully is working um yeah let's end the video there thank you for watching have a great day bye 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 <laughs>